Hello and welcome to the Saturday Club of April. Saturday clubs are aimed at providing exposure to evolving knowledge and interaction with experts from diverse domains. Today, we have with us Mr. Vivek Savant. He was the former managing director of MKCL and currently works as the chief mentor at MKCL. He contributed to the design and creation of Param, one of India's first homegrown supercomputers. His research interests include the creation of cutting edge technology for governance and education. Since the advent of online training, learning and education has undergone a significant shift. In this session, Mr. Savant will share his thoughts on IT in education field and its potential impact. The talk will be important in the context of national education policy. Um. <clears throat> Uh, friends, first of all, I express my deep gratitude to all of you to have been present here in spite of uh, your other commitments. I also uh, thank Professor Tillu, who have invited me here. Uh, many times I uh, you know, changed my dates, <laughs> but finally I could make it today. I'm so happy. <coughs> the, uh, the uh, SPPU has been my alma mater. I studied on this campus. Uh, those who have natural black hair, they might feel very surprised that I learned on this campus from 1977 to 1979. Okay. <clears throat> I also wrote uh, a research article on the university campus and it's 19th century English landscape garden. <clears throat> Sometimes when you want uh, uh, to know more about this garden, I can take you around and show the principles of landscape architecture, which emerged after the industrial revolution in England. But uh, that is not our today's topic. <laughs> today's topic is about new age teaching learning innovations. Just a brief connect with the past. In the year 1994, uh, when I, while I was working in CRAC here, <coughs> uh, we were building, we had already built India's first uh, indigenous supercomputer. And it was uh, actually demonstrated at Zurich. And Washington Post had put our news on the first page that India has also joined the select league of supercomputing nations. So after that accomplishment, I thought uh, and recommended to our board that we must have very close research linkages with all departments of University of Pune. So as a result of that, uh, you know, we did lots of research on uh, in computational physics, uh, the quantum chemistry, uh, molecular <clears throat> modeling and many areas, even geology, etc. Many research projects were laid. And that time I came with an idea that all departments of Pune University in the year 1994 must be connected on the internet. So that time I carried out a project <clears throat> on which you also get internet today. <laughs> and that is seven and a half kilometers of optical fiber network across this campus. This became the first ever university after the North Carolina University to have a campus-wide optical fiber network. And just to uh, tell you humorously that when I was planning this project, uh, several professors I interfaced and the professors of science department said that no such internet is required for arts faculty and uh, humanities and social sciences then I was very upset. So one day, uh, this, this is 30 years ago, I was 30 years younger. So I lost my temper. I got up from the meeting and stage a walkout. I said, this is not correct. Every department must get internet. So then Professor Polaskar, um, who was that time heading bioinformatics department, he ran after me in the staircase, caught me and brought me back into the room. He said, your proposal is accepted. I will convince all people and all departments will get internet. That time the uh, internet hub was in Ayuka. And that is how 
all departments got internet connection in 1994 <laughs> okay so and then you know lots of things happened in social sciences and arts faculty and humanities and things like that so that is a very interesting means for uh, today students they might think uh, that this is a you know uh, made up story but at once upon a time people used to think that some people may not need internet <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so let's begin um, i will rush through some slides but some slides may remain untouched but i have already copied it here with uh, professor tillu and you can get them so all slides are there with you before i deliver the lecture this is a classical definition of a university that it connects students scholars and subjects okay but the challenge before us today is can it also connect with society okay and this department is a classic example of that hmm? similarly there is another classical uh, vision about university and that is like this that university stands for discovery memory and mentorship discovery of knowledge memory means generational memories of scholars and professors by means of which you find the optimal path to learn any subject if you start learning yourself perhaps you may wander here and there but if you come to a university there is a syllabus and there is a hierarchy of you know educational objectives and then you learn with an optimal path so that is the generational memory of scholars and the mentorship but today's challenge is the sustainable development so we are beset with several challenges and opportunities for a university higher education cannot remain you know uh, disconnected with the social realities so we have five areas of challenges and opportunity each one appears to be a daunting challenge but each one is a full of opportunities also and the most challenging area that i find is climate change and people want still an aspirational and yet sustainable lifestyle sustainability means you are not going to take away the resources of your future generations that is simple definition of sustainability unless you make some great discoveries this is not possible and in spiritual sense of the word discovery also stands for discovery of self when a person comes to learn at university he is supposed to discover he is, he or she is supposed to discover oneself so all these things are at the backdrop of our discussion and therefore higher education has to deal with the sustainable development goals it has got three pillars one is economic pillar another is environmental pillar, and third is the social pillar and you can see uh, that each one each of these 17 problems 17th is a partnership but each of these 16 problems are very very daunting none of them is simple and it cannot be solved by some less educated people it requires a very very high quality of higher educated people to solve these problems on one hand i am trying to elevate this community sitting here that they can be the solvers but on the other hand let me tell you that all these problems have been created by people who took higher education none of these problems have been created by <laughs> illiterate people okay so it becomes our social responsibility to discover new knowledge and solve these problems okay so and digital empowerment for these goals is a very important aspect because without digital technologies you cannot solve these problems what has happened is ever since the first industrial revolution we have created a very complex society the the systems on the planet have become extremely complex and therefore we require equally complex technologies to solve those problems you cannot solve them by some simple technologies and be happy with it gone are those days so that is why you know technologies like artificial intelligence etc 
so all those technologies will bring digital empowerment to the people at large and as well as to the solvers of this problem the scholars who will look into these problems so for example if you took pandemic 100 years ago when similar pandemic came people were blaming god okay they never knew that human beings can solve these problems the history of vaccines will tell you that it has taken 8 to 10 years to stabilize a vaccine previously this time we had ibm hybrid cloud all competitors who created vaccines shared one thing in common and that is ibm's hybrid cloud okay unless that existed uh, we could not have synthesized a vaccine in less than one year's time the the uh, virus was detected in december 2019 within 10 days by 10th of january the genome sequencing was over this cannot have been done without powerful digital technology so we have to now create a strategy of using this technology in our teaching learning and assessment process and also in the student support process and eventually in the research and the university scholar should not be just happy by creating a sustainable planet they should go ahead to create a regenerative planet okay that is the real challenge that is where the cutting edge research will take place and that is where you people have future why am i saying this is because today normally in a middle class society the parents will aspire their son or daughter to take a google's job in google okay or microsoft or apple or uh, you know facebook or intel or you know uh, amazon etc mm. if you go with the uh, the first letters of these companies then the short form becomes go mafia okay <laughs> so but what is the next google what is the next google for you the next google is the green collar jobs those jobs are the jobs for repairing the damaged planet the planet has been damaged by our generation and the younger generation has to now repair it rejuvenate it <clears throat> recycle the materials upcycle the materials also re restore the environment and ecology so today in the developed world 4.5% of all jobs are going in this direction which are which you are seeing on the slide <clears throat> sustainability and regeneration <clears throat> by 2035 when you are really in the uh, uh, you know the in the real uh, stage of your uh, productive career by 2035 25% jobs in the developed world are going to be green collar jobs so you can understand how much technology is going to go ahead for example if you think about one example of regeneration then in australia uh, i went to see the great barrier reef and there is a there are corals and they are dying okay they are being destroyed now the underwater robotics has been developed and those robots go down and keep planting corals so that they are regenerated you know so very complex technologies are required so basically this is a big career opportunity and that's why teaching learning assessment must take place with some sharp sense of purpose for future not just something is given in syllabus and we are finishing that's not the thing okay <clears throat> and what is the rapidly changing digital age now we'll see several mega trends quickly and why i'm saying this is because the mega trend that i will show uh, the students uh, of 21st century are actually living in those mega trends these mega trends uh, are in their technosphere in their psychosphere in their social sphere so unless the teaching learning and assessment connects with these mega trends uh, the students may not accept the classroom will find itself to be an attractive and older one so contemporary classroom requires understanding and appreciation and assimilation of the mega trends and there are certain new ecologies which are coming up
these are progressive mega trends and i just put them in one slide for you to understand the word cloud i created for you one by one i will show you digitization is a mega trend when i was in uh, college we used to have a analog radio okay you may not now even know about it okay or analog watches okay there was no digital watch okay everything was analog the mega trend set everything started becoming digital okay i have given some examples below i will not go much into details but one of the fantastic example i have given is google lens you take any old script uh, script any old and script in any font and have google lens and it gets converted into you know text and you can then search on it and whatever manipulate it second important mega trend is digitalization that is your e banking e commerce e learning e governance everything has become you know digitalized okay so many many applications uh, while i am showing you the slides the applications and instances are shown below i will not talk about them because of want of time next big mega trend is the automation now in you must have seen on the streets of pune semi automated cars are already running okay if a cyclist come in between the driver doesn't have to apply brake the car stops automatically on the streets of pune okay so automation is a big mega trend augmentation and digitalization okay we are at the boundary of physical world and the digital world constantly and the teachers have to understand and appreciate this that the students are <laughs> either on, the, on both the sides of the world okay so for example this is a common scene do you agree with me yes or no especially the students yeah are you experiencing this in your life perfect next mega trend is virtualization this mega trends help you to be where where you are not physically there or not to be there where you are physically there okay so virtualization for example this meeting is also currently going on on zoom which and you attended your classes etc for uh, two years in a virtual classroom so virtualization especially after uh, the pandemic has become a, a big mega trend and the virtual reality therefore is becoming more real than the real reality and that is a philosophical issue okay and this is not pretty long uh, this department will also work on these kinds of technologies and very soon this will come because nowadays the uh, the technology is not just getting developed and deployed at a speed or at a high speed but it is getting deployed at breakneck speed okay so things happen just before you start thinking about them and then you are into it okay so how to use them in education to improve our teaching learning assessment is a task before the teachers mobilization everything is going inside the mobile everybody wants to know do things on the fly okay your library has gone inside mobile phone your calendar your watch your organizer your bank your government your post office everything has gone inside the mobile phone how many of you use the app called ndli national digital library of india yes great i am so happy <laughs> how many books are there you can tell your classmates approximately it is there correct she said it i am so delighted i would not have said in such clear words <laughs> but millions of books government of india has done a great job in under digital india initiative and every student must have ndli app on their smartphone teachers student everybody <coughs> <coughs> so basically mobilization is a big mega trend uh, are you agreeing with me uh, with this slide that it is a mega trend correct what is what do you call it as a mega trend when do you call something as a mega trend okay supposing i launch a movement that all mobile phones on the planet should be stopped 
how will i propagate this movement <laughs> correct i'll first get whatsapp create groups and start spreading my message this is called mega trend okay <laughs> you cannot fight against it it is like hitting your head on the wall you know you have to ride on this and try you have to make best use of that for our society to remove the injustice you know to remove the uh, disparity to remove poverty to remove hunger so that is only option left with us why these mega trends get set up is only because there are large amount of fundings that happen two or three decades before that then only they become mega trends when i was uh, in doing some work in various laboratories in england in, way back in 1989 right from uh, edinburgh to southampton all laboratories everywhere they were just working 89 wireless technology wireless technology wireless technology and uh, my wife dr sangeeta sawant is sitting here in those days i had given a call to her from england while in the car okay and when it went near heathrow london heathrow airport in the tunnel then it got disconnected hmm. but in those days 89 this was happening because research funding was there for and you know 20 years later even our you know the lady who uh, is cleaning our roads pune municipal corporation she has two gadgets in her hand one very low tech gadget which is the broom and another high tech gadget in another hand a smartphone okay mega trend okay so we have to watch where the research funding is going and then estimate what are the mega trends and then start using them in teaching learning research etc then you are with the world i will not comment on this mega trend at all because for the obvious reasons <clears throat> dematerialization okay is a mega trend and where there is a transition in the world from atoms to bits okay uh, how many of you come from maharashtra some of you okay uh, you have heard a story that shivaji maharaj went from anhargarh to vishargarh and that was communicated to baji prabhu deshpande by putting so many you know so canons okay huge we could listen to them how much amount of material was used for creating those guns then the and trinitrotoluene hmm? and those people human power to take those guns on the top of the mountain you can you cannot estimate the amount of expenditure that must have done been done for material for energy input for labor input financial capital input and so on now how do you communicate this maharaj posle how do you communicate whatsapp okay i am in the better part of pune city if i go to sadashiv pet then they say we will send a miss call <laughs> even that much energy is not <laughs> okay so what i mean to say is that because we started handling not even atoms but electrons dematerialization is happening okay so you don't have to use as much material for that so that's a mega trend and you can see uh, the can you see the garage band app there anybody has used it you can virtually play any instrument in that the actual musical instrument is not required okay any instrument you think about and you can play about the materialization okay <clears throat> the intermediation the postman is gone okay and if you want that the teacher should not go then better align with the new era the teacher has to do something which machines cannot do otherwise teacher will be deintermediated okay <laughs> like 
five years from now, I predict, if not five, maximum 10 years. You know who will be de-intermediated? Can you imagine? The banks. You will do banking without banks. Okay, with blockchain and multiple ledgers being, uh, having the immutability of transactions and provenance of transactions, you will have banking without banks. This is a mega trend, the intermediation. So we should not get into career where we are an intermediary. <laughs> the career will be doomed. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Aggregation and hyperlocalization. The last app that I have shown is so famous that I don't have to talk much. Is that right? Okay. Delivery in so many minutes, etc. So that is hyperlocalization. You never imagined that we will stand on the footpath with a small gadget in the hand and the taxi would arrive. Okay. And then when you get in, the taxi driver and you and the <clears throat> aggregator will use the same app, the map, and we'll go ahead. Okay. This was not known. Now it has become a mega trend. Airbnb in another example, etc. The distributed production because of 3D printing, the uh, means the uh, the uh, additive manufacturing in a distributed mode. Gone are the days when all the manufacturing will take under one roof. Okay, the the designs will flow, the generative designs will flow, and the manufacturing will be distributed at the local ends. Okay, and that is also required for. Uh, combating the global warming and climate change and saving the planet and things like that. Mass personalization. Okay. That is customized courses. That is what I've shown. Okay. Each one will get t-shirt of his own choice. That's a separate issue. But the courses will get automatically personalized. Mass personalized. Mm -hmm. Those two words are contradictory to each other, actually, mass and personalization, but that has become a mega trend. Okay. So <clears throat> we have to use that in education. All these mega trends, why I'm place, placing before you, they have to be made the core part of our methodology, our pedagogy, our entropy. <clears throat> Self organization. Now, students can organize themselves without an organization or without an organizer. I ran a company called MKC Egypt, and I was there in the Tahrir Square <clears throat> just on the same day of the elections. And I spoke to the uh, people there, and they told me that there was no leader of their own. Okay, they got self-organized on Facebook, and when Mubarak banned space Facebook, then they all came out in the Tahrir Square. And you know what happened? You know he is just gone. <laughs> okay. So people's power could get self-organized. And this is a big phenomena which we have to use in education that students can self-organize on problems, on collaborative projects and things like that, you know. <clears throat> Borderless collaboration. This is a unique uh, attribute of only human beings. Chimpanzees can also collaborate, but chimpanzees can collaborate with four or five chimpanzees, which it knows thoroughly well, not beyond four or five. Human beings can, you know, collaborate across the world. And now uh, I read Chinese newspapers in Marathi. So the language barrier is gone. If you use Google Translator app into the plugins of your browser and use People's Daily from China, open it, you can read it in Marathi. So, and it is facility available for more than 110 languages, at least when I saw it yesterday. Now one more language might have been added, who knows, breakneck speed, okay? So uh, borderless collaboration has to be triggered in education. Why our students don't collaborate with Brazilian students? They also have sugarcane, we also have sugarcane. Our problems are identical, okay? So why not collaborate? Many things, okay? <clears throat> Everything is going into apps, okay? Websites are reducing. And people are creating <laughs> apps, okay? Last time when I created this slide, it was 70, 27 lakhs. I don't know exact figure at this instant of time, okay? 
this is something terrible okay are you able to see that and <clears throat> how many of you <clears throat> are using dali that app you can download and see what happens hmm? this evening's exciting experience hmm? you give it some kind of uh, you know keyword and the painting will be in front of you so you are an artist actually and you don't know that you are an artist <laughs> okay <clears throat> like i am a typist and my typing speed i use the computer here in, in the versidak building is now the, the regional computer center way back in 1978 uh, professor takole was our vice chancellor great man great educationist uh, he brought the computer for us large computer full building okay 40 tons of air conditioner in those days my typing speed ever since 1978 is more not more than 10 but now i type with 200 words per minute you know because i am doing voice typing <laughs> so that's a creative disruption okay <laughs> means uh, i hope all of you are doing voice typing yes or no i write uh, articles in marathi also so uh, whenever i have to write an article i tell my driver that uh, i am absolutely mentally fit <laughs> okay don't think that i am speaking to myself throughout the journey okay so i hold my phone and i dictate the article and even complex words in marathi they get perfectly reproduced okay that kind of disruption is happening in many many areas okay and we have to get our students equipped for creative disruptions that are the directions in their career okay <clears throat> so technology should not be just used like a apparatus or something it's a philosophy you know it's a way of life and things like that knowledgeization of product is a big mega trend and <clears throat> everywhere the knowledge content of the product and service is creating the biggest contribution to its prices okay <clears throat> after some days or some years you will go to vegetable market and buy vegetables by paying the royalties on the patents in that that day is not too far uh, the mobile phone that you are using is a classic example of knowledgeization of product okay uh, can anybody tell me uh, why do we pay so many thousands of rupees for this such a small device where does the money go when we buy a phone where does the money go huh? okay one answer is microprocessor but microprocessor is not a man or a company where does the money go huh? okay apps are again not a person or a company where does the money go the money goes to the owners of 200000 patents in this small device okay those who hold the patent rights and there are 200000 patents in this small device and in if you check in us patent office then on almost all patents including this cctv camera for which there is a nobel prize for each and every patent there are at least 12 claims uh, 20 claims so 20 people are saying i did it first and the royalty must come to me okay so when you go with a phone in your pocket or your purse you are carrying 4 million quarrels simultaneously with you okay this is knowledgeization of product okay the the price that you pay for the medicines the price that you pay for your cars or for your laptops or mobile phones and so many things your home appliances and things like that more and more the content the price content is going for the patents and the royalties not the material not the uh, labor or not the dumb labor or not the financial capital okay that is the situation so knowledgeization of product is becoming a big mega trend even the food even the food you know the doctor who prescribes you some small diet normally in pune city takes 
3000 rupees is that right that is knowledgeization of the service okay whereas if you are having some real you know uh, fever etc that doctor takes only 800 rupees who really, really cures you but the knowledge content in that is coming via the medicines for which you pay the royalty from while buying the medicines okay so this is the shift which is happening productization of knowledge okay now the knowledge has to be represented in the form of copyright or patents or whatever and that has to be sold so knowledge has become like a sellable commodity okay so that is a big mega trend so you see everywhere people are trying to you know put it into patents and then sell it get the companies acquired get the companies merged and create wealth out of that so that is a mega trend and convergence of all these mega trends for the sake of convenience i explained to them individually actually all of them come simultaneously like what i explained to you the more you think about their uh, convergence the more you will realize what i am saying so all of them put together is something like this there's a convergence of so many and these all mega trends we have to use in teaching learning and assessment and student support to take a big jump why because our national education policy uh, you know the implementation committee of maharashtra state was headed by dr mashelkar and uh, i was member of that committee to uh, write the chapters on digital education vocational education and teacher education so without using this that the, the policy's objective is by 2035 we have to hit the gross enrollment ratio of 50 percent huge target that is entire population of india 18 to 23 years of age 50 percent of that has to be in colleges okay today's our maharashtra being a progressive state its gross enrollment ratio is 26.3 percent so if you take it as 25 we have to double in next 13 years but possible you cannot construct the equal size of you know double the size of buildings and double the size of teachers and this and that so what you have to do you have to use these mega trends to make the effective and quality education happen okay there are certain ecologies in which you stay first one is a data ecology and you know that <laughs> okay and means so why I'm going to say this is because you think that you are using information technology in your life. Okay. But what is the truth? You are living your life in the ecology of information technology. That's that happened. Okay. So you are inside that cloud. Okay. Cloud ecology. Hmm? All of you are on the cloud. Right now, you are pretending to be very gentlemanly with me, but in the minds of your mind, your mind is wandering in WhatsApp. Is that right? What must be the next thing? Okay. That is your, by your mind, you are on cloud. Okay. Sensor ecology. Uh, there is a tremendous breakthrough in a uh, large number of uh, nano sensors. Okay. Even a half a liter of solution, you will have billions of sensors uh, and you can use them for multiplicity of purposes. The higher education and its capability to solve the problems of the society will suddenly jump up. Okay. Because the sensor ecology and each sensor is growing smaller in size, smaller in its uh, energy consumption, smaller in its price. So there is a big revolution taking place in <laughs> sensors. <clears throat> Then there is a surveillance ecology and surveillance ecology, even though I have shown you a camera here and there and everywhere nowadays, there are surveillance cameras, but uh, when you lose your phone, smartphone, what do you do? Huh? Find my phone on the friend's phone. Okay. And what does that, what happens? It starts showing you where your phone is and when the thief is running, you can trace him till such time there is a charge in the phone the battery is on and the your sim card is there when it is removed then only police knows it because they track it on INEI number okay 
So th that kind of surveillance is taking around. Now, how to use it for education? Okay, how to make students know about the reality while studying inside a department? Okay, so all these ecologies again are converging. Okay, new media ecology. I don't have to talk much about that. Everybody wants to see videos, videos, videos. Nobody wants to, you know, browse a text nowadays. Glass ecology. Glass is the word used for the smart devices. Okay. This glass. Okay. So all of you are I mean, the students here, they are teenagers and they are screenagers. Okay. <laughs> My request that they must become greenagers very soon for a very rewarding career in by 2030, 35. Okay. <clears throat> the artifact ecology. Uh, in your uh, presentations, uh, can you just see at the top, there is a presenter media. Can you see that? Presenter media. Can you read that? Has anybody used presenter media? No. Have you seen Vodafone ad, the Zuzus? Huh? They're from there. So you will get large number of Zuzus to make your presentations fantastic. Okay. And there are so many artifacts. I will not go into each one of them. But so many artifact libraries have come, generative designs have come, and you can quickly finish your tasks, your assignments, your research work, and things like that. Okay, so that the productivity and per capita expenditure of our education goes down. In the Mashalgar Committee report, I have shown that if you integrate information technology in teaching, learning, and assessment effectively, then the per capita cost of higher education per student per capita cost per year comes down from 55,000 rupees to 10,000 rupees. That much saving. So you can double. You can give education to double the number of students. Why wait for 2035? You can do it much faster. Okay. So digital artifact ecology of generative designs, even they are not there for only higher education. Even if you go uh, to a carpenter, and explain him, and that is the duty of higher education students to help the artisans of India. If you just say chair, okay, chair designs, and give some broad specifications, you get one million designs instantly. That is artifact ecology, okay. And then you can offer to the customer a variety of choices and things like that, okay. So, so many things are available to you. I will not go into each detail. These slides are kept here. You can individually, you know, explore each of these. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this I don't have to tell you. You are already buying your clothes and shoes and, uh, you know, necklaces and whatnot on Amazon. So you are normally on the platform. Okay. Gone are the days when you are on isolated, you know, uh, shops or things like that or isolated websites. Now, there is a platform as a service, pass as they call. When uh, we did our careers, uh, we were having in a SaaS area that is software as a service. Now it has gone ahead and platform as a service. For example, Coursera is a platform. Okay, and you are taking courses on that and large number of people come and give their courses. So instructors come, give their courses, people consume the courses, researchers analyze the performance of the students, assessors come there peers come there and things like that. So they all dance on the platform, which is created by Coursera or EDX or Udemy and so on. Okay. So platform ecology is what we have to use this ecology in our education. Otherwise we start creating things from scratch and then we waste time. Same is with, with the artifact. If you have to just write a resume for some placement, you know, such beautiful templates exist <laughs> that you can't imagine, okay? Means I teach uh, digital technology to millions of people every year, almost uh, something like 1.2 million students join our courses every year. And they are from villages and, you know, deprived communities. So bridging the digital divide. So those students create tremendous impression when they go to a job interview, suddenly, because their bosses don't know how to create such a beautiful resume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, their photograph will, never go wrong in the aspect ratio because they use the designer tab in Microsoft Word, okay? 
so the aspect ratio doesn't change even if the photo is enlarged or reduced okay like that so the platforms so finally we have to you know ride on these mega trends and thrive on these ecologies and that is where education has to go <clears throat> and all this is happening with this single thing in all the mega trends i mentioned that has happened because when uh, in the last century the slogan was electrify 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 okay if a farmer has a pump hand pump somebody will say that electrify it make an electric pump now they say that make it a smart pump okay so cognify it cognify it cognify it everything that we are doing in education we have to cognify cognify and cognify so all the mega trends i showed you there is a partnership between artificial intelligence and human intelligence okay please do not consider artificial intelligence as your enemy or your competitor or your adversary at all because the characteristic strength of artificial intelligence are non human like okay uh, when we used to learn artificial intelligence way back we used to read it herbert simon or marvin minsky or alan turing alan turing at that time had given a turing test which said he said that the human beings will not be able to distinguish the difference between the behavior of artificial intelligence and behavior of human beings that is turing test but fortunately it is not true okay we have ways and means to differentiate between the two because you know the human beings have one very interesting property and that is what our teaching learning and assessment must focus and that property is consciousness okay we don't look at consciousness what is consciousness that you can look at your mind by your mind okay and you can reflect upon your behavior that i didn't behave properly okay or i was not ethical enough when i did this or that you your mind with you, with the help of your mind you can observe your mind this property is not there with artificial intelligence the more you deploy this property into action the more you are better off for artificial intelligence now what happens our education system focuses on exactly behaving like artificial intelligence that is when you look at most expected questions give the expected answers in expected time in expected format and you get unexpectedly high marks okay but as soon as you pass out and go outside the university then all unexpected questions are around you and you are not trained for that so the objectivity of artificial intelligence has to be complemented by the subjectivity of the human beings so the examination system has to undergo tremendous change there should be no question asked if we have to safeguard the careers of our students never a question should be asked in the examination which has one and only one answer which is objective answer every question should have subjective answers okay otherwise we are doomed because that technology is progressing uh, with a great speed and it can overcome you okay <laughs> so for example i gave it a problem that babu borkarancha kavitecha rasakran kara and it did that chat gpt did that okay so <laughs> now i have to see what more i can do beyond what chat gpt talked about bb borkar's poetry this is a challenge okay so everywhere we have to cognify and that is the uh, you know uh, way to go about now and while we are cognifying it we have to also bring along with consciousness we have to bring compassion okay because that is where you cannot be beaten by the artificial
okay compassion for your society compassion for your community and how to you know uh, help them and things like that so i would advise you that you should read a wonderful book called it's a very small book called man's search for meaning by victor frankl who was in concentration camps of hitler and he still could come out and at in those concentration camps whatever he went through and then he found a great secret of what is the real purpose of human life okay and if you read that book you will never have depression you will never be you know having any distress or despair or anything so man search for meaning okay so that is what we need in our education now because otherwise if we make the students learn the same way as or answer the same type of questions which ai can answer i don't think they will have any future the problems for us are six problems one is we have to give education to a very large number of people currently the youth in india between 15 to 29 is 40 crore okay and the era has come where lifelong learning is required even the oldies will have to learn and keep learning okay learn and learn and relearn nobody can escape that so second biggest challenge is better everybody wants a world class quality of education third is we are a poor country 22% of indians live in villages and live below poverty line uh, uh, not villages below poverty line 17% of our countrymen live in slums they don't have purchasing power but they should also rise if the if the smallest of the small member of the society grows then only india will be growing otherwise no use so our offerings of education should be cheaper affordable faster you cannot tell people that please come by 2040 we will create a great education system okay then students will say okay then meet me on 2040 right now i have to make my own way spider <laughs> anywhere anytime they don't have to come to pune mumbai etc so many mega trends are there so much of ubiquitous technologies are there why they have to travel and come here not necessary they should get advanced education wherever they are that is the use of it in teaching learning and assessment these are the burning problems of india deeper that is mass personalized development of every student every student is different from every other student even though trillions of atoms in our body 81 elements are same but each unique each assembly of trillions of atoms in our body is unique okay <laughs> so and it was never before and never going to be again in the future so each one requires a personalized education okay so that is where we have to go so the solvers there are two solvers one is we have to be wiser okay that is create <coughs> partnerships you should partner to create infrastructural resources now this building for example it remains uh, you know vacant during evenings okay by partnership some people from other communities can come and learn here in the evening okay like that so we have to network the infrastructural resources financial resources human resources developmental resources <clears throat> and create a synergy and not to reinvent the wheel again or reinvent the essentials again so that is the first solver and the second solver which is a part of our today's discussion that is be smart deploy technology 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 okay and use the best possible actionable knowledge don't use the older <laughs> means uh, obsolete knowledge you have to use the most actionable knowledge the actionable knowledge can be modern or traditional that doesn't matter but it is it should be actionable okay and use appropriate technology Te appropriate means what it is economically appropriate it is environmentally appropriate and it is socially appropriate that technology we should use <clears throat> <clears throat> and that's why information technology offers you this solver in terms of smarter and wiser option is there in you know great academicians must 
do the resource pooling. They should not say, this is my department, I will not allow anybody. This is my computer, this is my internet. No, share whenever possible. Okay. <clears throat> so information. Are looking at this photo. It can go in the reverse direction also for you. When you put face up after 30 years, it can show you how you were looking young. Hmm? And you can send that on your DP. Okay. And appear to the world that you are young. Hmm? But mass personalizer in education. So these are the attributes and strengths of information technology if used correctly. Okay. <clears throat> It can be used to uh, create disparities also, misused to create disparity. If it is used correctly, then it is an equalizer, okay, like this. So we have to use it that way, and our higher education system should show the way to the rest of the society. So these are the attributes. Now I'll show you quickly the scenario in colleges and universities. Uh, is this the representative picture? Okay, yes. And here is a teacher who is she has a knowledge of emerging trends among her students. And she knows that teaching is not like teaching anymore. Do you agree with this? Yes. Teachers agree with this? The students will agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So she decides not to be sage on the stage like what I am. <laughs> she wants to be guided by the side because technology allows her to do that. This is a new paradigm of teachers. So it looks like this, this versus that. Okay, are you able to see? Yes. And all devices you have the, you know, intuitive and responsive interfaces uh, cross platform. So no problem whether some student has a smartphone, some has a laptop, some has a tablet, no issue the learning management systems go across, okay, depending upon the, <clears throat> and this is typically the classroom where, what are the students doing? Let us see why she is concerned. This is happening. Is that right? Yes or no? Yes. I go to many colleges and they're outside, you know, mobile phones, smartphones are not permitted in the campus. I said, what is this? That is a mega trend. You cannot escape it. Use smartphones in the classroom to make teaching, learning, assessment effective. Okay. And here is a way to go about. Okay. This is what is happening currently. Hmm? Is that right? Now, she is designing a lesson and a timetable. So, these are the kind of learning management system. So, you can have everyday new songs for the students. Because they are going to use this, you know, teachers' uh, the most favorite songs and students' favorite songs. And when it starts the login page, you know, with this song, then very uh, soothing experience and the timetables. So you don't have to worry about when you put a, just a Zoom link in this timetable, the lecture starts on Zoom. Okay. You don't have to send it on WhatsApp and this and that. No. Start it. Put a link here and it. And the student clicks it, whether he is on tour or whatever. Okay, the lecture starts. Okay, like this. And this is how the table of content is created. And all the lectures, everything is kept here already because it's a flipped classroom approach. Okay, all the inform, inform, inform will happen at home, and perform, perform, perform will happen in the classroom. Okay, because our strategy is inform to perform, perform to transform. Okay, unless you perform, you don't learn. Okay, when you when you just read or listen to lectures or YouTube videos, etc., you get information and that is not knowledge. Okay, the neuroscience tells us that when you read something or listen to a lecture, say for five minutes, the cognitive overflow begins, like it has begun in this hall. 50 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> so there is a cognitive fatigue. 
to the students after five to seven minutes because the in the uh, your short term memory is also smaller in size you can't help it that's a biological tragedy okay so after every five minutes unless there is a perform part the information content is overflown okay if you ask some activities to be done some intellectual activity some emotional activity some physical activity some kinesthetics then only that is converted into knowledge okay peter drucker has given a very simple definition of knowledge this knowledge is information in action okay if somebody believes that after seeing ted talks and youtube videos on swimming you can swim in best of luck okay action 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 performance is required and that's why all the inform part must take place at home okay and that's why technology helps you because almost all students now in higher education have a smartphone the teachers can organize their content in this way and give the videos to the students and this is a beautiful tool which we have created which i'll just show you in a minute and you will have surprise if it works there is my spec I'll put it here itself. This is a deep curation engine we have built. Now, anybody should tell me some topic in your study. Quick, some topic. Phases of clinical research. Huh? Phases of clinical research. research. Is that right? Spelling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and see what happens now it's a deep curation engine which we have built by using artificial intelligence now i go here and these are the five best youtube videos on the topic that he wanted let's play one and he has to tell me whether it is right or wrong internet speed may be here and there but done it started this is technology okay internet speed is fine that you have better speed that you can play that okay clinical trials are research studies that involve people most clinical trials to test new cancer treatments are done in a series of steps called phases if a new treatment is successful in one phase it moves to the next phase Let's take a look at the three main phases of clinical trials. Phase one trials are small, enrolling less than 30 patients. Phase one trials are designed to find a safe dose of the new treatment. Determine how the treatment should be given and learn how it affects the body. So like this, you know, you can go ahead and create large amount of content. I didn't show you the rest of the links. The, the mind map that I created, you can go to TEDx and create five best TEDx videos. You can go to Khan Academy and get, you must have seen that, you know, in the previous slide. Did you yes. see this? Okay, everything. And the most interesting thing that we have done is here okay even the apps 
on phases of clinical research if there are some apps also you will get them so what do you want more what does the teacher want more so teacher should not waste her time in giving lectures and lectures and lectures best of the learning material is available if it is not then she can do the recording and put it here so that students can consume at home and then do the perform content in the uh, classroom and what kind of videos are available and i'm going to hold this object at my chin and i cannot move any further back so there's no cheek here i'm going to release it right from my chin you realize as you have just seen that the slightest push and this will be my last lecture <laughs> and no book finding after this and i have to tell you something i couldn't sleep that night i don't want to show my i don't want to see it and i'm going to come down to speak to you but if my hands shake a little and if they give it a little push then of course it can go back and it may want to go higher than this so what i mean to say is such beautiful learning experience is available and we should not deprive our students from that you know and millions and millions of such learning experiences are available <clears throat> and i'll show you just a quiz okay it comes on the smartphones of the students what happens is that students give the answer because this phone just slightly vibrates so student comes to know that oh some quiz has come and this quiz can be created at time that is 30 seconds you have to reply so that nobody can reply you know by copying etc in the class a b c d options have come suppose so the teacher wants to know this is not for so much of knowledge but teacher wants to know whether the content that she sent has been learned by the students or not or they were sleeping of course we also have the facility to tell how many minutes the videos have been watched and we remove the uh, you know fast forward etc all that we do but that doesn't mean that he has actually learned okay so there is a quiz and when the quiz comes the students answer somebody says a b c d whatever now the students answer like this the smartphone is completely under the control of the teacher's uh, smartphone or teacher's laptop nothing else works on the smartphone except that app okay so nobody can watch some movies etc while sitting in the classroom okay and now the students reply so somebody says like this okay and finally suddenly what amitabh bachchan does in kbc audience poll okay a b c d comes a by 0 students b by 0 but 20 gave c and 20 gave d instantly the teacher is aware that she has to give the remedial coaching for the 20 people who have given wrong answer the right answer was whatever okay and you can see here see this was a comprehension type question and this is a bloom's taxonomy of hierarchy of educational objectives this is knowledge this is comprehension this is application of knowledge this is analysis this is synthesis and this is judgment 
judgment is the highest level of educational objective okay this is bloom's taxonomy what is so higher about higher education if you ask me this question the answer is that that education which deals with higher level of educational objectives one two three last three is higher education okay that is it deals with <coughs> analysis synthesis and judgment and that is higher education the lecture the word lecture derives itself from a latin word lect lkt and lect means you know divide divide means analyze okay the the discourse in which there is no analysis is no lecture okay it may be storytelling or whatever it's not a lecture so normally the questions that we should deal with are this if you are asking some simple knowledge like question then even though outside it is written post graduate department still it is a elementary school okay or if you are asking just application of knowledge then it is high school okay go up suppose four codes are given in java input same output same the question should be which code is superior to which other code and why then everybody has a different answer okay not the same answer for that question everybody can think differently so like those questions when are when they are dealt then it is higher education okay and technology permits you to check that because it allows you time inside the classroom for those kinds of discussions and debates and you know differences of opinion ultimately what is the purpose of higher education purpose of higher education is to challenge the existing body of knowledge and extend the body extend the boundaries of current knowledge further that is called higher education friends uh, what i will do i'll stop here there are large number of slides ahead of this but uh, there is a time limit the organizers have given and i must respect them so i will stop here i wanted to show you even in the traditional classroom with just a smartphone in hand with small software what wonders can be made in teaching learning assessment this if done throughout the year say from childhood say from say fifth standard then perhaps by the time the student comes at post graduation and if longitudinal assessments are maintained in some large databases then i can tell the student that irrespective of history geography economics or uh, you know molecular biology whatever you have been good at application of knowledge throughout or you have been good at synthesis and that is where your career is you know that information technology otherwise in our progress books you get this many marks in geography that much in history that much in mathematics and makes no sense okay so for the student's career development data analytics and item response theory is creating wonders so we can deploy all those kinds of things i have created uh, the digital rights manifesto for the students of higher education what the government should do to give those rights to the students because unfortunately many uh, little girls in maharashtra committed suicide during the pandemic and i was writing this report during the pandemic and every day there used to be some suicide story because she could not get a smartphone to learn to join the virtual classroom this story has happened all over india so some digital rights have to be given to each and every student so i have written digital rights manifesto and government has accepted that now let's see whether the budgets are given etc some 3000 crore outlay for every year for maharashtra's higher education not a big amount those 3000 crores is given this will create 3 lakh crores of gdp for the state you know if people are developed properly so those 34 uh, rights what every student should get are also there in this uh, presentation you can go through later on if you, there are any questions please uh, ask them if time is there i don't know it's already 4:54 we started little late 6 minutes late so we have 10 minutes more can i request you something from your audience and i think it's something that you have many of you most of you uh join this session can you sir have the next uh, can we have this as a series and maybe next month as per your convenience Can yeah. we can we can we 
uh, because as a teacher and as a student, uh, we are learning many things new, and uh, you are teacher of teachers. Uh, <laughs> because we we knew. Uh, I'm student of students. Oh? I'm student of students. students <laughs> here. <laughs> so can we have the next uh, uh, remaining part as yeah, yeah. Uh, part two? And uh, on this part, can we have some question answers? Uh, so we knew, we, 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 we discussed the Guru's taxonomy. We also discussed a lot about higher education. But the way you connect it, Higher education with Guru's taxonomy, I think that is really amazing. Uh, information foundation, application, analysis, synthesis, and judgment. So, Sanskrit name of, for judgment is Vivek. Vivek. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very uh, a new insight. This is a uh, really uh, insightful topic. Sorry, I'm not getting you. See, the thing is that uh, uh, when I worked in uh, UK, because America had put a ban on supercomputers to India. So that is why our organization was created, CDEC, to build supercomputing capabilities in India for climate modeling, for reservoir simulation, for seismic data processing, for launch vehicle dynamics of ISRO, and such strategic problems. So when I saw there that what kind of wireless technologies are coming and people will have in their hands handed devices. <laughs> and, and here people were thinking whether the department should have internet at all. So I was trying for three long years. Finally, when Professor Gupte became vice chancellor, he gave me the permission to do that. 80% money I got from CDAC, 20% university contribution. Okay. And that is how it was created. Because I thought that, you see, in those days, um, it used to be called, now th these words are not known to this generation. But they, those days, they used to say that there will be information superhighway on a global scale. The word internet was yet to come. Information superhighway. Okay, so information superhighway can come only through optical fibers. The signals have to, uh, you know, uh, be communicated at speed of light. And that's why I thought of putting optical fiber, not just ordinary cables. Okay. Because uh, we, were, we had built some 1024 processor machine to solve large problems. Now, the huge amount of information was to happen in India. And simultaneously on this campus, we created a wonder of the world. That is, all Indian languages were first brought on personal computer. Okay, I appointed calligraphers for all states of India. Best of the Odia calligraphy, best of the Bengali, best of the Assamese, best of Gurumukhi, and so on. And uh, we also brought Naneshwari on CD. <laughs> okay, in that script technology. Okay, so that is why I was thinking that this is coming and people are not realizing that they are opposing that we don't require, we have a Jaikar library, why do you require internet? What is so great? So this happens. That's the time, every time it happens. Even today it happens. Why should we use technology in the classroom? We are there to give lecture 45 minutes. <laughs> Now, if you don't use technology, how will you come to know how much the student has understood? This shows you instantly. And Indian classrooms are full of students, 120 students in a classroom. How the teacher can go to everyone and find out what he or she has understood? Here you get instant 
picture. Even we have implemented fastest finger first in that. <laughs> Amitabh Bachchan's <laughs> his photo comes, but that creates an unnecessary competitive spirit. There has to be collaborative spirit. Okay, that's why. Hmm. Because if just a challenging environment is there, uh, there is one stage of learning that happens. But if in addition to challenging environment, if there is a uh, social interaction space, then even greater learning happens. So uh, competition kills that social learning or social groups means uh, interaction uh, possibilities in social groups are killed if you say that this person is first. So that's why uh, higher learning and uh, learning has a beauty that learning changes the structure of the brain. Okay. And the structural change in the brain gives rise to the functional reorganization of the brain. And the technologies that we did not talk about, there are two technologies with the help of which you can verify because I'm in the health sciences department, that's why I'm saying this. First is, first is PET, the positron emission tomography, and second is functional MRI. With these two things, you can actually see the structural change when learning takes place. When learning takes place, the uh, the capillaries, the volume of capillaries, blood capillaries that develop per nerve cell increases, thereby giving better oxygen and better nourishment to the nerve cells. And this can happen when challenging problems are given, but when social uh, atmosphere is given, one more thing happen, happens, and that is the number of synapses per nerve cell increases. Okay. And you can see learning. In functional MRI, you can see that the child has learned. Okay. That is technology. <laughs> Nobody has to say that, okay, sikha, nahi sikha, fail, hua, ho, which nahi. Of course, those technology are costly, but tomorrow they will become cheaper. So we can actually see. <laughs> you know, parents will get every day. <laughs> Positron emission tomography. <laughs> this will happen one day. Today they come to know na, through smartphone too many things. When I was going in school, my mother and father didn't know what I'm doing. Going, it was in a way good actually. <laughs> okay. Digital digital reading. Reading. I was taking some big thing. Some researcher reported that. So if they can give out some other big thing in the break with us and digital reading would it take it? And yes, research from the American would it do problem with that competition? See, this is a very interesting thing we have to study. Uh, there is a popular misconception that we use only 10 or 20 percent of our brain. Okay, I'll come to your question by giving some background. There is a popular misconception that human beings normally use 10 or 20 percent of their brain, 80 percent remains unutilized. You know, but when I started studying this, because every village of India you go, you see very smart people, they are continuously thinking how to survive. They'll take a lot of, you know, uh, struggle with the environment and they survive. I have not met any single non-intelligent people so far, person so far. I was worried about this problem. Then I studied this deeper. Then I found that this statement has been made based on that there are silent areas in the brain, almost 80% silent areas in the brain. So what does what do the silent areas in the brain do? The twenty percent brain, which is functioning, that you interpret, is based on the sensory or motor activities which are happening. That's why you can see them. The silent areas of the brain is where neither sensory nor motor activities take place, but there you are in the deep zone of cognition. That is thinking, reflection contemplation, classification, you know, those things are happening. Therefore, 
they don't send any signals either to your muscles or from the sensory perception visual perception etc so they, they are not silent zones they are deep thinking zones now coming to your question see if some researcher has shown that because of digital reading the deep thinking is obstructed that means he has taken out some data from the silent zones silent areas it's not zones silent areas of the brain i have to study what instruments did he use to get the data from the silent areas of the brain then only i can comment on this i may have to read it and find out because uh, so far mere uh, aage woh sunte hain mere aage woh sunte hain आइडेंटिकल <laughs> I may be wrong. So, so to me, to my IIT level approach, my idea is that they should be basic, separate as a lot of other people have. That is only because of this campus. When I came, uh, I was learning there, and my father redirected the postcard from Pune University that I also got admission to MSc in physics. So you know, those days travel, etc., were difficult. Getting permission from home. to travel somewhere not so easy so i such father sent a letter so i thought ki i will go and meet my friends in pune by that excuse so that's why i came to pune it was the month of june so the campus was so lush green that i fell in love with this campus and fortunately there were not too many buildings here it was serene campus and everywhere it was green and serpentine roads and etc i wrote on that later by studying the uh, landscape architecture of this uh, and then i went to meet uh, professor mr bide not vg bide mr bide he was our head of the department and uh, i said sir i got such a such later but i am already studying there so i just thought i should come and pay respects and communicate my uh, this thing not joining etc so he told me that you will learn much advanced physics here than in iit and in spite of being just a young student he took me around in so many laboratories and then i realized that here things were much advanced than this thing then he introduced me into none other than the great giant of physics professor ram takole and he was so loving so simple you know and he inquired about from which city i come and all that and i never thought that i would ever see professor ram takole because you know he used to set the question bank for bsc and i used to study in a small college in nasik and all very very hard questions you know and on the first page there used to be preface professor takole's signature i wish you all the success from the after hard work that used to be last sentence <laughs> <laughs> so for us he was a sort of you know mystic personality i never thought that i could have, i met him with such a gentle person i said he said we are having uh, advanced microprocessor laboratories way back in 77 you can imagine then i wound up my bedding and came here and i didn't get the hostel because all hostels were full so that time our rector was dr dikshit from Geo geography his wife was a german lady and i had learned german i had diploma in german language of pune university so i used to go to his residence on the campus and start talking to mrs dikshit in german she pleaded for me to, to give a bed in the hostel extra bed in one room <laughs> <laughs> that's how i got posted <laughs> everything some someday comes to use you know 
Okay, so shall we conclude? Sorry. Last question. Yeah, please. Uh, so this is a little bit what you are I think uh, we saw the advances in uh, complementary style education, digestion, and certainly will enrich the knowledge of students. I don't think there is any problem in any specialization of it. Do you really think that this is going to be compatible? <laughs> this is going to? Compatible hmm. with the generation of employment. From the state agency. What I honestly feel that the state has been very in the way. They are now asking the education institutes to generate employment. This is my perception. How do you look for this? Yeah. Uh, see, <clears throat> uh, when we solve the real problems of this society, the employment is uh, abundant. I'll just give an example. How Pune University can do it? It's very easy to give advices, so I'm doing it. Huh? But see, uh, there are so many departments, and now the national education policy allows you to go uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and things like that. Okay. Look at the current sustainable development problem. Okay, focus on that. Even the simplest problems like water pollution and air pollution. Simple. Focus on that. And there is no dearth of money. I'll give you the proof. The proof is that last year, the Green Tribunal levied a penalty of 12,500 crore rupees on Maharashtra government for breaching this, okay? If a knowledge body like Pune University comes forward and say that we will save you that penalty by giving advanced knowledge and the deployment to our students, where is the dearth of jobs? No dearth of jobs. Because as for Paris Convention we have signed, we have signed those protocols and we have to go to net zero so there are many opportunities. Green hydrogen is another opportunity. Many opportunities that it means I'm talking advanced technology, not the routine jobs. Okay, routine jobs I give to every year, thousands of students, normal job in digital technology. Okay. So if a village girl is there <clears throat> through digital freelancing portals, we give the jobs to them. You know, there is a marriage and there are 5,000 photographs taken and photographs have lots of chairs and you know plates of uh, the food etc they have to be removed so she bids on the portal say i will clean up those photographs for three and a half thousand rupees and we teach all the advanced tools on smartphone how to do it and she does it and she gets that money so that is a different employment i'm talking about the postgraduate level okay or up to postdoctoral level so these kinds of things have to be done. The unsolved problems have to be solved. Okay, and that requires the, you know, that kind of commitment to the society. It doesn't happen just by writing one more paper with uh, somebody has put three terms, now I put the fourth term and produce one paper. And that doesn't create employment. Those remain unemployed because there is no education. You have to take the real problems and solve them. Then only it happens. And those who solve real problems never remain unemployed. Pune University has n number of examples of that kind. So that is where the focus is. That's why I showed you the sustainable development because those are challenges at the planetary level. And small solutions also you create, you create a large enterprise. You know, which I also started in a small room with furniture, one chair, table on the rental basis. We created a large enterprise because we solved one concrete problem of the society. You know, that, that is the thing. Means, for example, uh, the, the Nasik district is in this university. The tribals of Nasik started walking from Nasik to Mumbai to ask for their forest rights. The scholar from Pune University should think as to why they are walking barefoot and their feet were burnt okay 
a concrete technological and scientific solution was available. I invite I uh, invested some two crore rupees. Met uh, Sri Devendra Fadnavis. I said I will solve this problem. You give me the chance to do that. He said we don't have money. I said I'll put two crores of our own, and we solved that problem. So now we created lots of money because of that. Because Madhya Pradesh government accepted. Now Jharkhand is accepting. Odisha will accept. So the community forest rights have been given to the tribals. Concrete problem, and it required. the several technologies and sciences of forest and ecology and sociology and most importantly geographical information systems and of course computing lots of computing so this can be done we don't see them they they, they are they are on the television means i had some small illness so i was at home <clears throat> so for a change i was seeing the television i understand so that march coming from nasik to mumbai that what is the problem let's study it i visited 19 experts and some of them from pune university <laughs> and we could synthesize the solution now every state government is buying it we are getting money like that so i think that is required so i have a question i'm a doctor and basically First of all, I was thanking you for opening my eyes to a lot of things which I did not know at all, and really dazzling what's coming. Thank you for pointing out the potential to a good man to be. In my own field, the advent of medical, the advent of technology, has driven out empathy. And ethics. I am not going to talk about this. If you are aware, to open a new corporate office, technology is there, but empathy, ethics. While this has got tremendous advantages, and this is the way to go, should we not build something to protect, to protect? Character building and instilling values in students. This is not an abstract question. Scientific research has shown there is a doubling of the psychiatric problems in the age group of ten to twenty-four, which is no boys. And it is not only psychiatric problems, but also Problems of bad eating habits, not exercising, substance abuse, throwing away social mores. I have nothing against people throwing away social mores as long as it does not lead to adverse consequences at the personal and family level. But it is. Will this technology have something built into it? Which can satisfy self ensure that you partly touch it. I uh, feel you know, one point is of social relevance of this under the social relevance. Because I feel that technology, knowledge alone cannot save society. You rightly point out that a lot of the sustainable development goals are there because of the problems created by us, and we are still continuing to create those problems. What are we doing with this technology to see that such problems do not occur? And young people come out not only tech savvy, highly knowledgeable, but also responsible to themselves, their family, to the society. And uh, I think this is something which uh, worries me. I do hope my fears are unfounded. Yeah. <clears throat> 
uh, quick answer two dimensions first let us talk about medical profession because you mm -hmm. mentioned about the uh, ethical uh, you know degradation there uh, what is the future of medical profession as i see it now is that uh, the artificial intelligence the, the doctors where you wherever you meet meet them normally they are extremely happy when they do the diagnosis okay and they leave it there okay that is what i have seen among the doctors now the best of the diagnosis will be done by artificial intelligence very soon uh, which will be much cheaper like for example if you take the distribution of capillaries on the retinal this thing then without doing ecg or 2d eco or uh, uh, angiography you can diagnose heart diseases at 5 rupees or 10 rupees this will happen a lot of disruption is going to happen there and therefore what will be important now in medical profession is therapy and care okay where the nurses have to be deployed on a large scale because they will be enabled by artificial intelligence for diagnosis a few doctors will be required other doctors are required as surgeons who really care for the patients etc the problem of ethics among the students is multiple but for that you know my uh, approach is that that's why i recommended the student that they should read man's search for meaning you know such books have to be made as a part of the curriculum students will love those books we believe that they will not read but i tell you with 100% guarantee they will read for example gandhi ji's autobiography students will read with great love and passion i am sure about it because it's such a transparent thing he is telling about himself that cleans our mind also when we read autobiography okay what is required is an education as a human being rather than as a machine the entire 20th century has worked to transform human beings into means money printing machines okay that has happened in the history the history of humanity has not been linear there has been so many things the buddha came the jesus christ came you know so there have been great heights of humanity that have been reached sometimes sometimes it has fallen 20th century is a century where the quest of the mega or mainstream quest was to convert human beings into machines so they became workers in the factories they became workers in your army and things like that and they followed the order there was no need for their creative thinking you have to follow the master if the commander says fall in then i have to fall in if he says fire i have to fire i don't have to think so that was dehumanizing the humanity okay and that great impact we are seeing of that past on the current generation okay now for bringing as a core of the education the issues like compassion and you know fortunately the body of knowledge is so rich that it clearly tells you that self transcendence is only the path of leading to a joyful life okay unless you forget yourself you cannot be joyful and self actualization through careers that people are seeking this self actualization is not a goal to be pursued but self actualization is a side product of self transcendence okay this has to be theoretically understood by a student of higher education and that is what we do in nirman but that activity he mentioned okay so unless it is brought and that rich body of knowledge is there you know several spiritual masters have happened in india we never bring them into our curriculum unfortunately we never teach buddha we never <laughs> never teach you know shankara acharya and like that yeah. unfortunately huh? even vivekananda uh, vivekananda like that you know so the thing is that 
how self transcendence is going to give you a joyful life is a very practical curriculum it's not idealistic curriculum that has to be seen you know so uh, this is required for example uh, means uh, unless you dedicate to somebody you know unless you do that selflessness or self transcendence the serotonin is not secreted happiness hormone is not secreted <laughs> you know it's a practical thing but it is not taught it is, we are teaching the same curriculum you know bookish gandhi victor frankl vivekananda all this is out of fashion <laughs> they have to be brought in fashion. Right. They have to be brought in. <laughs> That's the way, because you know people uh, follow if they see the role models. So the role models have to be shown. You know they cannot follow by just reading books. They have to see the role models. Thank so you. shall we continue? <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, before that, some uh, our colleague.